What's up with it? Um, it's been a second since I've talked here. Got a lot to talk about. Let's get into it. Uh, new tech verse today. Really fucking good. Um, I don't know. I don't know why he's still getting better. I don't know what to do about it. I don't know why people even bother still making music. He just he just keeps getting better, and it's not fair. It's just not fair. He just keeps getting. I mean, I. Okay. Anyway, I'm, we're going to see him tomorrow. Anyway, that, that's pretty cool because he's coming into town and he just put out a verse yesterday. But yeah, the, the verse he just sent he he did for Sadistic. He sent him it like last year, but it just came out. It's really good. You should check out Sadistic's album too. Um, he has a verse on there with Idea. It was like the la I think it's the last verse Idea ever got to do before his overdose. Um, and you know, uh, um, um, Sadistic is the one that found his body. So. Uh, I, I'm really interested to hear that track, um, but yeah. Anyway, I'm going to I'm going to see Tech tomorrow, and uh, Lynn's coming, and we're going to take her little sister since she's never been to a Tech show. If you've never been to a Tech show, it's I mean it's it's unless you can show me something better. As far as I know, it is the best uh, solo performance uh, you you know th th that's out there. I mean, this dude does over a hundred shows a year everywhere. That's how he's been doing it. That's how he's gained his Popularity is just through shows. He's been doing it since the 90s. He does at least 100 shows a year. It's fucking crazy. So if you've never been to a tech show, you, you need to go to a tech show. Uh, even if you're not a fan of the, the genre. And the guy's just amazing to watch on stage. People are so nice. Like, even for me, as somebody who's so antisocial, um, to be able to get out, and, and it's like the one time a year that I can get out and actually be around people like me. Because it's very, like... I mean, think about it. To be able to herd somebody like me out into Houston, downtown Houston, to go see something, um, it takes a pretty special uh, event. So the result is a, a pretty interesting crowd of people, and, and I'm always it's, al it's always very loving. Usually, when you go to a show, people are really aggressive and like. But no, I mean, it's, it's all love. I mean, tech fans are the coolest fans ever. So I, I'm even if just for the other people alone, it's always really cool to go to a tech show. But then in October, I'm going to see Ritz, and nobody knows Ritz down here. Um, so I'm going to get like VIP ticket. I'm, I'm going to get a VIP ticket, which is like 40 extra bucks. I'm going to get one for Lynn, too, and we're going to go chill with Ritz. And uh, that'll be cool. I'm sure nobody will be back there. Nobody's going to give a shit to buy VIP tickets here in Houston. But I'm going to go chill with Ritz. As far as I'm concerned, Ritz is like the best right now. As far as I'm concerned, Ritz is the, is the best artist in music, period. Not just in hip-hop. I think right now, unless, I mean, just going by the people I know, and I know I've seen a lot of fucking musical artists from everywhere. I am very worldly when it comes to my musical intake. Um, and as far as I'm concerned, Ritz right now is the pinnacle of, um, at least just on a technical level. I mean, that dude is so fucking insanely good he, he has like Eminem's a bit of a, a, like rhyme ability like just and that's saying a lot I mean like go back to Legacy on on M's last album where he's like doing that same that same rhyme from beginning of the song to the end like if you take his first rhyme at the beginning of the song and the last rhyme at the end they rhyme like it's the entire it's the same multi all the way through with added ones in between um, so like if you take out the the hook it's just one long ass rhyme all the way, th like all three verses. So like he has like he does that shit, but he does it with like text like clarity. He doesn't quite have like the insane like ability to come up with like fucking cr like you see me get money, honey's everything I'm about to You know what I'm saying? Like to have that ability to come up with like insane flows that shouldn't even work on a beat. You know what I'm saying? He doesn't really have that. He just he just goes fast as fuck. And he, when you think about fast rappers, you don't really think about Ritz, but that's really all he does. Everything he does is double time. He has this one song where he's like, where he's, where he does, where he goes slow, and you've heard the slow shit. Now back to the double time. Up with ripping the microphone when it was jugging us, there was a kick, but up with losing my mouth for the patch and a half in the powder. He's still like, he, he, <laughs> everything he does, he, he does double time. Which is a lot to say, especially when you're doing that shit live. And he's a big, bulky dude. That dude looks like a fucking, he looks like a quarterback or a, or a bodyguard or something. Like, he, he's fucking... I don't see how he does that shit on stage every night. But, uh, yeah, as far as I'm concerned, Ritz is... While Tech is my personal favorite artist, I have to hand it to Ritz that he is the, the best doing it right now as far as I'm concerned. He just puts... I, like, he just puts the most work into his music. 
Um, and he's only, he only has one fucking album out. He has some mixtapes, but he only has one official album out. Um, the Life and Times. He, he just finished writing his second one, but I don't think he's recorded it. But yeah. Um, I cannot find one lackluster verse from him. It's like everything he put... Somebody did um, Somebody did a compilation here on YouTube. If you look up Ritz the Features, he just put together all of Ritz's like, feature verses, which is hard to find. I mean, I found all the text, and it's that took years. But this guy put together all of Ritz's songs, all of Ritz's feature verses, and these are just verses that are... Even he gives to like... People like me that pay him a, like that, ju that just pay him enough. He sends them a verse, and even though he knows people most likely won't hear it, at least uh, at least not most people, he still writes as if it's gonna be his fucking greatest song ever. And I and I really appreciate that. I really appreciate that from Ritz, and and I want to let him know that when he comes down. So, um, speaking of coming down, we just got back from Oregon yesterday, uh, me and Lynn. I took Lynn up for our five-year anniversary up to Oregon, up to where, what I call home. Um, I've never lived in a place for more than a couple of years, but I grew up there from ages 10 to 14, 15. And, uh, and yeah, it, that was very nice. I, I, like I said, I took Lynn to see places that aren't, um, hold up, I've got a message. Uh, I, I went to. I, I took Lynn to see places that aren't Houston, because she's never been outside of Houston or Texas as a whole. So... Um, she got to she got to be on her first plane ride and stuff, and that was a lot of anxiety for her. And it was it was just, we had a it, it was kind of annoying because when you when we got there, we realized we couldn't get a fucking rental car. You, it, okay, here's the deal with rental cars: you have to be either twenty five or you have to have a credit card and be twenty one. In most places, you have to be twenty one. Besides, like one place I found um, elite rental, um, you have to be either twenty one with a credit card or 25 usually with a credit card anyway um, and I don't know I can understand the age thing but I don't understand requiring a credit card for things even if you're not going to be using the credit card I don't understand that like there's a lot of places that require there's a lot of things I can't do because I don't have a great credit score I don't have a bad credit score I just don't have a credit score and I don't think it's fair to punish people who are good at paying for things up front because I don't like the I don't like I don't Besides like crazy huge payments, like if I were to buy a house or like a really nice car, I don't like the idea of making um, of making spanned out payments on things. I like to just pay for things up front. So given that that's the case, I don't have any reason to pay for a credit card. So I think it's unfair to punish people um, who are good at paying for things up front and prefer doing that. I don't think it's fair to require credit scores to do things. Because it's like all the things that I've ever needed a credit card for were things that you don't actually use the card itself. It's just to say, I, I'm good enough to have credit, like a good credit score, and and, and, and I have a credit card. But they never actually, like, it's never actually stuff that I would use the card itself for, so why would I pay for one? That's fucked up. So anyway, we got there, and lot, after calling every fucking place in the Rogue Valley, we were in Medford. Uh, well, we started in Ashland, we stayed like half the time there, and then from the 12th to the 19th, we did in Medford at a Comfort Inn. And by the way, if you if you have to choose between like a Holiday Inn and uh, and, and like a I don't know, an American, or a, a what is it, uh, what was that place I stayed in here during my, that, that extend, America st extended stay or something? Pick, pick, pick the Comfort Inn. I mean, not only are they usually cheaper, they were for me, uh, they're cheaper, but they have fucking everything. You go downstairs, you're like, you know, sometimes you don't even have money and it's like late at night and you, like, you don't have cash on you and there's no ATMs nearby and you just, you just want to go get something from the vending machines. The people will just pull out money to give you to get food from the vending machines. And they give you, like, razors and stuff to shave and they give you everything and the pool's open, the pool and jacuzzi are, are open 24-7. And because it's Oregon, we could smoke dabs and weed and they didn't care and because everybody on the floor was. <laughs> but, um... Yeah, well, it was crazy to go to a place where at least at least it's at least it's legal medically. So like, I was not worried at all about getting caught, and that was really cool. Like I was, <laughs> I remember I I shouldn't say all that, but it it, it was fun. Uh, speaking speaking of that though, I actually had my first psychedelic trip this year there. Um, I did take half a hit of acid um, in like March, I think. And I realized, like, okay, my anxiety is still very high. I'm not quite ready for this. So I gave it more of a break. And uh, I, we went up to Lithia Park in Ashland. It was the day before we left. It, this was the 18th. And um, it was myself, uh, Jason Knight, 
who was a friend of mine from middle school, uh, my best friend Owen McClure, who who chilled with us the whole time we were there, um, and, and he was our chaperone. He was the reason we had a ride most of the time. So thank you, Owen. Um, but yeah, he took us up to he took myself and Lynn and Chase or not Chase, uh, Jason Knight up to. And I hadn't seen Jason since middle school, so he just like he came by. He like came back into town that week from uh, from Eugene, I think. And we went up to Lithia. And if you haven't seen Lithia Park, it is fucking crazy. I got some video of it. I by the way, I got a ton of video of this whole trip and a ton of video before it. I got like three or four clip smashes to make. I got a lot of work to do. Um, but he took us up to Lithia Park. And like I said, I got a video of it, but please go to YouTube or go to Google right now and just look up Lithia Park. It's in Ashland, Oregon. This place, I I got there, and I didn't even plan on taking the acid, really. Like, Lynn wanted me to take it. It was getting the acid there that I was really psyched about, like, the fact that I got it onto the flight and stuff and got it across the gundry. Um, but when, once I got it there, I never, I like, I, I guess I had planned on taking it, but in the back of my mind, I knew I wasn't going to. I, was, I, I had been pushed out, because if you go too long without taking it, or if you get bit too hard, you get, you develop what they call the fear, um, which is just the general fear of, of putting psychedelic substances into your body, and, 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 and I can see why that fear would exist. You know, it's a scary thing to, 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 uh, to, to, what's the word I'm looking for, to, to, to willfully throw your own consciousness into foreign places. So, I, like I said, I this was my f- first time really tripping that year, and, and we, we got we got up there, and I knew like halfway through the hike, we, we, hiked, out, we hiked all the way through Lithia Park, I knew like halfway through, I was like, yeah, there's no real way, real way around this, like if I'm going to take it and get over the fear thing, I'm going to take it now. So like, we got to the end of the hike, and right before we turned around, I popped it out, and I, and... Lynn was like, all right, I guess if we're doing this, and, and I offered Jason, we, I had three hits, and I offered Jason one, um, well, I offered the third hit, I was going to let Jason and Owen split it, but Owen, he wasn't interested, he's he's burnt out on psychedelics right now, um, so it was me, Chase, and, or, I keep saying Chase, it was me, Jason, and Lynn, we all took one full hit, and uh, everything started out great, everything started out great, started out great, <laughs> uh, we walked all the way back down. By the time we got down, we were we were pretty. We were, it was definitely starting to kick in. We were feeling it, um, and everything was good. Everything was treating me well. My anxiety wasn't kicking in. It had started to for a second, but I knew that as like as long as I kept the music on and I let my emotions flow through the music I was listening to, and not let the music reflect my emotions, then I was good. So I just kept my music on, and it was like any time. It was kind of scary because any time I would turn my music off, or, or or like somebody would start talking to me, and I had to like mute it or whatever. Um, the anxiety would start rushing back in. So, but, you know, I've had, if there's anybody, and I'm going to have to stop this at some point soon for the next part, but um, for anybody that's gone through as much anxiety as I have, like to the point of like feeling like you're going to go into cardiac arrest, um, you learn a lot of techniques for dealing with it. Even at, even not, not even like therapeutic techniques, just stuff that your body develops as a reaction of having to deal with that much anxiety all the time. Your body develops its own defense for it. It's actually pretty cool. Um, just the more anxiety you go through, the better you naturally get at it. So I was I was very good at, at playing my head and, and telling myself, you know, I'm on acid and, you know, it's it's there is still a finite amount of hours that I will feel like this. And I mean, I'm, I've I've only one time, and that was on when I took way too many mushrooms with the Syrian rue mixture when I had that death experience. There's only been one time where I completely slipped. Where I like completely lost touch with this reality, and I had no, I had no grips, and that was my worst trip ever, uh, because I'm, I'm not that far yet. I'm not that good at letting go of this reality. Um, I still need, I still need like one foot in the door. You know what I'm saying? Um, it, most of the time, anyway. Um, especially when it, when I was that far away from. I'm gonna stop this now and just go to the next video.